or YouTube. Right, this is just a small video. Um, if you buy your NQD jet boat and you want to change it into a brushless board, that is basically what you start off with. You get your little men, take them off, split this in half, and it's just two little clips that sit on the top. Um, that is the clips. After you've done that, you need to cut out a line. Now then, what a lot of people do with make mistakes on this is, you see the green? Yes, you can do it. It doesn't know if it looks like green on this camera. Basically, when you cut this out, you need to cut a line down there, missing the black thing at the back, because you're going to use that post, obviously. Also on the front, you're going to have to cut a line just along level with where the battery actually sits now, because yet again, you're going to need this little piece here, which is going to be your flat piece where your perspex sits on to make a watertight lid. So don't cut it along there. You have to cut back here where my finger is. Also when you cut it, you're going to cut roughly where this thing here is, which is your switch. So the best thing to do is undo your screws, pop your switch through, because you're not going to be able to get your knife blade through there. Um, if you want to keep it brushed, careful you don't cut these wires off. You will need them if you're going to leave it, if, if you're going to leave it brushed. If you turn the brushless, it doesn't really matter. Those wires are too thin anyway. Um, so we're just going to cut it out now, and I'll show you what it's like after I've cut it out. Right, so after you've undone the screws here, pop your switch back up, pop your switch back inside, and you've scored a line all the way around the inside with your knife, nice sharp knife. Be very careful because once it cuts, it just slides straight through the plastic. So what you want to do is you want to scratch your line where you want it, and scratch it a couple more times, and then easy, easy knife in very, very slowly. So once you've done that, you should have a shape that will pop out like that. Okay, so you've still got your lip at the front, you've got your lip all the way around the outside between the little groove at the edge here, about a centimetre lip, and all around the back obviously, and that's what you take out. So inside what you've got is you've got a servo, which isn't a proper servo, it's an all the way left or all the way right servo, so you're going to replace that with probably a standard servo, hopefully a waterproof one if you've got one. You've got your jet drive down inside here, you've got your, whoops, you've got your 380 brushed motor sitting inside there. There's the little switch that we took off before, that you just pop down underneath. And then this side, which is standard with the NQD jet boat, um, is your receiver box and your speed controller. But normally they're stuck down, and every single one of these I've seen so far, um, the, the glue on them has come away and that's just been rattling around inside the box. So it happens to them all. Um, they just must use some not very good glue on them. So basically what you're going to do is, you've got an aerial wire there, you want to poke in back through. I'm just going to pop your clip on like that. Let's just pull that back through a little bit from it. And basically, chuck it to the side. And you'll find in the back of your motor here, you've got two little nuts. Now some of them are screws and some of them are allen keys. These ones happen to be screws, luckily. You're going to take those two screws off and replace that big 380 brushed motor with a brushless motor. And to show you the size comparison, that is the motor we're going to be replacing it with. So it's slightly shorter, but a lot thinner. And obviously this one's water cooled as well. So I'm going to take that motor out, um, normally to get the screws out of the back of your motor you have to take your, uh, your servo out. Now the servo is glued into a little plate, if you want to take that off, if you turn your boat over, you'll find there's some screws on the bottom. The four equal screws hold your jet drive in, and the fifth one which has a little rubber grommet as they all do, holds your servo plate in. So if you take that screw off, your servo plate just should just like crack away from the boat. So I'm going to do that now, and I'll get back to it. Right, now, servo box, servo plate is now taken out. As you can see in the bottom there's a tiny little hole. It's just in the shadow. No, you can't see very well. But there's a hole anyway, that's where that screw went, which holds your servo plate. Now, that's your, oops, that's your servo plate there. And what you're going to do is, you're going to pop that servo off it. Remembering which way it is, because obviously your screw goes into the bottom of there, through the bottom of your board. So you want your servo in exactly the same place, and if you can get away with using that servo horn, all the better to you. 
So I'm going to take that off and see if I can get another servo popped onto there. Alright, that's it. So the 380 brush motor, which is there, has been taken out. When you take it out, you get a, a sort of a weird. I'll show you it actually. You can see that on this one. You see the, the greeny cream colour thing that goes around there? That's like a little bushing that goes between your motor and your um, your jet drive. Now, it, 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 put it back on. If it's stuck on the end of your motor, on there, take it off, put it back on there. If you don't put that on, your motor doesn't sit exactly straight um, and you get a lot of vibration and heat. So, if you just put that on there, see, it is a little bit bigger than what the motor is. But you've got to put that thing back on. Um, so that that's pretty much it. Yeah, the brushless motor's in. Um, it's tightened up here. I've still got to get the collet and the flat part of the motor joined up. But I need to move that collet back a little bit because the motor's um, the shaft on the motor isn't as long as what that one is. So it's only a couple of mils shorter. But you know, so you just move the collet back over a little bit, and that does that. Um, and then it's going to be starting to get the servo in. So. See you shortly. Hi right, YouTube, I'm back. Um, it's been a little while since I've been working on this boat, um, but I've just got a few more bits that I need to fit. Um, probably one you've just seen as last time I didn't have the servo fitted. Um, spin it around and show you. All I did was I put a, a standard, I think it was a Futaba 3003 servo inside of here. Um, I fitted it onto the original servo plate and put the original servo bracket on top and a bit of double sided sticky tape to keep it there. Um, I used the same servo arm, and as you can see, I'll just poke the little the little wire thing out of the back to control the, the water, jet, water jet nozzle. Right, so basically what I've done is I've slackened this little nozzle off and turned it to the side, because I'm just busy drilling, Oop. you can see the little hole I've got inside of the jet there. Now all I've done with, is, with that is I've taken a little brass coupling, Drill the right size hole inside of there, and we're just going to put that inside, put some epoxy resin around it, and screw it in place. And then, when the engine's running or the motor's running, the jet should force enough pressure of water through that, uh, and that should supply enough water to cool the ESC and the motor. So, I'm going to epoxy that now um, and drill a hole probably in the back here for the pipe to go in. So, I'll be back with you as soon as I've done the epoxy. Alright, well that's in there now, uh, the epoxy resin's all set. Um, apologies if you can hear anything, it's started raining outside, so it's getting very dark, so I put my other light on. So if you have a look there, oops, I'll show you a bit better. We've got a load of epoxy resin just sitting around that little brass coupling, which has been screwed in. Now when you screw it in, try and make sure you don't get it to go too far into your little nozzle. Because if it does, it will impede your propeller going around. Uh, you do not want to hit in the propeller. You need it just far enough in to be able to get the pressure of the water to squirt up inside of it. Now the next stage is what I'm going to do is I've marked on already. You can see at the back here there's a little hole or a little dimple. That's where we should be putting a hole and we'll be putting this little L bracket in. Now the reason that you put the little L bracket in is so you've got a straight bit of pipe from there to the L bracket. If you try and take your pipe from there and bend it too early into here, it'll squash the pipe. And if it squashes the pipe, you won't get any water going up through it. So the best way that I've found of doing it anyway is just using a straight piece of pipe from there to there. Um, so I'm going to put a hole in the back of the board and attach the little L piece. And then I'll show you what happens after that. Okay, right, well... As you can probably see at the back, I'll get a bit more light on for you. The brass coupler has been fitted into the end there. Um, I fitted the little L joint inside there by drilling a hole through the back of the board. Um, around the back of that, I put some hot glue, uh, and I intend putting a little bit of two-part epoxy resin around it. Joined it up with a clear pipe, and inside, you maybe can see down at the back. That's where the pipe comes in at this back corner here, and ends up here. Now what I intend to do is where the water comes in first, which is through that pipe, is that will go through the ESC first. From the ESC then it will go to the motor. Um, pretty much I like to keep the ESC cooler if I possibly can. So the, the, the warmer water goes into the motor and then straight out the back. If you can see up inside the boat I've also put a nice block of polystyrene. Because if these things do go down you'd rather 
save it and it be wet than not save it at all. So a bit of polystyrene up in the nose of your boat will keep your boat up. So I'm now going to fit the ESC um, or at least attach it um, and put the water pipes on for the motor. So pretty much nearly there. Okay YouTube that's pretty much done. Um, like I've already showed you I've already put the pipes in straight from the back without bending this one goes into the L bracket goes inside of the boat, it runs along the inside here and it runs into the ESC which is a 50 amp Hobby King Birdie ESC that's actually sitting, oop, sorry that's actually sitting to the side, I found that was the best place to keep it up off the bottom because quite a lot of the time these boats do get a bit of water in the bottom of them so I thought if I stash it a bit higher the water level is not going to hit it uh, I know it's water cooled but I'm not sure if it is waterproof so you've got your three wires off your brushless motor going into your ESC you've got the water feed into the top of the ESC there and you've also got the return of the ESC coming out of there back under the boat here and then it goes into the motor there then from the motor it fills the, oops sorry guys follows, fills this little water jacket here and then comes out of this pipe here which comes out of the back now all I've got to do here is put a little bit of uh, epoxy around the back just to keep that keep it watertight um, and that's pretty much it done then all I've got to do is put the receiver in and attach the servo and the ESC wires. Um, like I said earlier on I've already filled the nose full of uh, polystyrene so if it does go down it's gonna bob or at least it should bob that way. Um, one other thing that I have done is I've cut a piece of perspex um, exactly the same size as the piece of plastic were removed and now put a couple of holes in which seems to fit quite nice. Oh, hang on. Poke them wires back in which sits on there nice. I need another little bit of foam to go front and back there um, but once that's on and you put your little men on the top oops, if we can get it to go in because the heads keep it um, keep it nice, there we go and it pretty much just looks like a normal kids boat again um, obviously the receiver is going to go in so the little antenna is going to come out of here but that's pretty much it done and finished um, if anybody has any questions or ideas or better modifications give us a shout um, and let us know what you think thanks for watching now bye bye